What a beautiful evening here in Fayetteville, Arkansas. The cool of winter has settled in, but inside it's the heat of the moment because this is a house of winners, and John McDonald built it. He is the track and field coach for the Razorbacks of Arkansas. 41, count them, 41 national championships. They are marked by the banners and plaques and a lot of celebratory pitchers. We are in Fayetteville, Arkansas. This is the Tyson Invitational. This is the third stop of the USA Track and Field Visa Championship Series, the Tyson Invitational. And we are at the Randall Tyson Track Center here at Fayetteville, Arkansas. And again, for the second year of the Visa Championship Series, two athletes honored based on their performances throughout the series. They'll have a chance to add to their point totals here tonight, and we'll be telling you all about that. We are ready to go with the women's 800 meter, our first event here. I'm Gary Thorne, Larry Russell. Are we ready to go? We are, Gary. We are truly ready as you look at Alice Schmidt right there. And we've got some top talent that's right on the line. Hazel Clark wearing the all blue, recovered from a sprained ankle a couple of weeks ago. And she is the number one ranked woman's 800 meter runner in the United States and has been a two time Olympian for a number of years. Get down to 157.99 seconds last year. One minute 57 seconds is flying along. Few Americans have gotten that fast in the last decade. All right, we'll see whether or not they can add to the records that we're going to see here. Certainly the uh, women in the center of this track, Tarini Clement for one of the USA, is going to be one of the favorites, but it's this should be a very tight race with the with the women who are in three, four, and five. Kenya Sinclair from Jamaica had a career year last year. She improved by five seconds in her 800-meter time and won last weekend. Let's take a look at some of the performances. Hazel, last year, coming down the home stretch and winning the Tyson Invitational handily over a superb field here one year ago on this day. Trinia Clement had her best year ever and excelled at both the 800 meters, getting under two minutes, and in the 1500 meters as well. And just last week, it was Kenya Sinclair pulling away on the last lap from Jen Toomey, and she really dominated the women's 800 meters on the tight turns of the 800. All right, let's see how they uh, run this one. As we expect, as we said, Clement, Sinclair, and Clark in lanes five, six, and seven to be favored in this race and get off to the top start, and they may well separate themselves early in this race. And the pace is very solid. The Rabbit is expected to take the athletes by in about 61 seconds plus, and it is a very solid pace so far, Gary. You take a look at uh, Sinclair on top from Jamaica. Osborne, who's from, who entered late actually from LSU, is racing here, and he's a Clark third as they came around on that first lap. Alice Schmidt coming down at the U.S. Training Center on the right of your screen, and the ponytail is right now pulling up the back of the pack up here. And many of America's best 800 meter runners are in this race. Sinclair running extremely strongly. Hazel Clark moves up to get in position, and they go by in just seconds. over 60 seconds for the first 400 meters of this four lap race. So the favorites, in fact, are there with Sinclair and Clark and Schmidt through the first two laps, one, two, three, in that order. Sinclair uh, stretching it out, maybe a couple of steps here, not being pressured at the moment as they come around the turn. Hazel, not the strongest sprinting finisher among 800 meter runners in the United States. She likes to be close with a lap to go. This is the bell lap, and it is Sinclair on top, Clark, and then Schmidt, one, two, three. They have pretty much made this a three women race at the moment. Sinclair, she looks very strong and is extending the lead on the back stretch. She does, Gary. Look at her run away, just like she did at Millrose last week. The young lady out of St. Jago's High School, one of the track and field powers in Jamaica. Great turnover down at the University of Florida, being coached now by Tom Jones, the women's head coach. And away she comes. Sinclair with an enormous lead. She will cross the line. The victor on officially a 201-83. Alice Schmidt coming in second. But Sinclair, a very strong race. Once she got on top after the first two laps, Larry, she uh, had the stamina to build the lead and just kept going. You know, Gary, when you get down close to two minutes indoors in women's 800-meter running, that is really extraordinary stuff. 
And Sinclair in this very fast eight laps to the mile oval really runs extremely well. Take a look at her down the home stretch. Good arm action. She took control early. She's running very confidently. And last year improved uh, by five seconds her 800 meter time. Get down to 158.88. Set a Jamaican national record. And she was the winner last week at the Milrose game. So she has made it. Uh two events in a row in which she has come out on top in the women's 800 meters. And she dominated. I mentioned before that Jamaica looking to improve their middle distance runner. She's a great example of that. There you have it. The women's 800 meter in our first event. Sinclair at 201.81. The official comes away with the win. Schmidt and Clark two and three. The future of American track and field is on stage tonight at the Tyson Invitational. The 60-meter sprints match up college athletes against the sports elite. Sean Crawford, Terrence Trammell, and former Arkansas Razorback Tyson Gay headline the men's field. On the women's side, a star-studded lineup including Laura Williams, Veronica Campbell, Angela Daigle Bowen, and the current Visa women's point leader, Lisa Barber. Former Razorback Alistair Craig headlines a fantastic field for the men's 3,000. And Shante Howard goes for her third straight high jump this season. And in the marquee matchup here in Fayetteville, a world record could be broken as Wallace Spearman, LaShawn Merritt, and Karan Clement race the men's 300 meters powered by Tyson. The 2006 Tyson Invitational is brought to you by Tyson Foods. Have you had your Tyson protein today? By Adidas Running, impossible is nothing. And brought to you by Visa. Go on, live life, and remember that no matter what it takes, life takes Visa. And welcome back, everybody. Delighted to have you with us as the crowd settles in for a night of some tremendous action that you're going to see here and a good house will be on hand. Take a look. Visa Championship Series. This is the third week current standings. Lisa Barber of the women on top and for the men Reese Hoffa continues his lead as number one the Visa Championship Series points coming through all of these meets. How did these two get there Larry? And they got there with great performances last week at Milrose. It was Reese Hoffa's day to shine not only by showing his leaping ability but his speed across the circle and he had a great great competition Gary getting out several throws over 71 feet uh, really dominate the men's shot put competition on the women's side Lisa Barber took the lead in Boston with the first competition and Milrose she was nipped at the tape by the number 100 meter female sprinter in the world Veronica Campbell Hello, everybody. I'm Gary Thaw with Larry Ross, and a great to have you with us. We are looking forward to a lot of excitement here tonight, a lot of different angles to this meet. How about an overview? Gary, a short overview is that there's 25 Olympian and World Championship team members, 17 of which have won medals at either the World Championships or the Olympics in competition from various countries. We will see great performances in the field and on the track. Great athletes, obviously, here. Take a look at some of the names and faces that we will be talking about tonight. Going left to right, Wallace Spearman, the World Champion. Championship silver medalist at 200 meters tries to break the world indoor record on his home track at 300 meters. Alistair Craig, who is familiar to these people down here, is an Arkansas grad. He is the world's fastest miler right now, moving up to the 3,000 meter distance. And you take a look at Lisa Barber and Veronica Campbell. These are the two favorites in the 60 meter event for the women. They have swapped wins in the first two Visa Series meets so far this year. Take a look. National where we'll be headed, USA Cross Country Championships, the Bronx, New York. And for the AT&T USA Indoor Championships, it's Boston, Massachusetts. So mark these dates down for some more great action that will be upcoming. February 19, USA Cross Country, that will be at midnight, ESPN2 will have it. February 26, ESPN 330 Live, AT&T USA Indoor. We were talking about some of the winners and some of the leaders. Well, right now, downstairs, Leslie Maxey is with Lisa Barton. 
Lisa, you had a hard time last week in Milrose, but because you laid it down in Boston, you set a pace that nobody's been able to reach yet. What is it going to take specifically for you to hold on to this bib one more week? Well, I just plan to do well in each race, and last week it was challenging, but each of these each of these meets that we do are very challenging, and I just want to stay focused and stay relaxed at the end of my race, and I think that'll carry me through. Okay, now I gotta ask you, have you logged onto the Visa Championship Series website to see how you do against your other competitors? Actually, I have. Um, last meet, Joanna Hayes did very well in the hurdles, and I know if she would have ran a specific time that she came very close to, she would have took over the Visa Championship lead. So I've been checking on it now that I'm the leader, so of course. <laughs> okay, thanks so much. Good luck tonight. Thank you. Gary? Leslie, thank you very much and now we are set for the visa men's 400 you see the world and American record set by Clement here at Fayetteville and the Tyson Invitational record LaShawn Merritt holds that we'll be seeing him here tonight that 4493 mark holds up from 2005 for Sean Jackson the number one 400 uh, meter hurdler in 2005 racing here. You know, Gary, heartache in a year often is followed by great success the next. Just missed the Olympic team and vowed he could, he would really show everybody what he could do. And he had a great, great year in Helsinki. The weather was crummy over there much of the days of the world championships. Pouring rain for his race, but storming down the home stretch with a white bandana on which is a, a little thing that he gives an acknowledgement to his uncle was Urshan Jackson and he held off James Carter by 13 one hundredths of a second both Americans taking first and second at the world championships he is from Durham North Carolina we will see Tyree Washington we'll talk about uh, adversity and what he has gone through he has had more than his share in his, in his life injuries that kept him out of the Olympics now now 30 years of age and he's vowed he's going to take the next three years and really show what he can do and try and stay focused he has sometimes not always been focused and an enormous talent coming out of California high school was Tyree Washington finished the, the season last year very well ranked sixth in the world Chris Brown from the Bahamas is on the outside ranked number four in the world was Brown there is Brashawn Jackson the reigning U.S. indoor champion at 400 meters Tyree Washington 6'1 185 pounds pretty good size man I tell you he is so chiseled it's hard to believe and, and a very articulate guy his wife, Chara, has been a real steadying influence on his life after a very troubled youth. So you've got uh, Jackson, Washington, in this one who are going to be the favorites. Jamal Ashley who will be in lane three, and Chris Brown, who will take up lane six. Elaine Francique was supposed to be in this race and would have been one of those who uh, would have been among the favorites, but was a late scratch. 46. 46.13 seconds is the fastest time for 400 meters in the world this year. These guys are going to get under it, in my opinion, and have a chance to run maybe 45.5 or better. Let's see. Now, they will stay in the lanes through the first two turns. You want to have the lead coming off the break here to try and get to the inside. That's what you're after. After they get through the first two, that is Washington on top in the blue. Washington followed by Brown from the Bahamas. They head to the back side. Ashley third. And Jackson is fourth. Here, they are very tight. Here comes Bershon. Let's see what he's got left. Usually 40 meter hurdlers at this distance on the flat have great stamina. And Tyree beginning to tie up a bit. Washington tying up on the outside now. Jackson trying to overtake in the blue. And that is close. I think he did. At 46.02, the unofficial. The fastest time in the world this year for Jackson. What a finish. Sean Jackson put on. Might have been a great dancer, Gary, in his earlier years. He's learned how to lead really well. <laughs> he did that on a lean. He did that on a lean. You're exactly right. 60 meter and 110 meter high hurdlers are great leaners in the tape. 400 meters. Now he laid back. And I mentioned you guys who run the intermediate hurdles over the 400 meter distance have great stamina. They, they overtrain to compensate for all the hurdles they have to run in a race. Look at the arm action. I say that all the time to you youngsters. Watch the dip in the tape. You always run right through the tape. Never ease back. Well, the 22 year old indeed does just that. Coming up on the outside, a tremendous finish to overtake Brown. 
Brown may be the most surprised person of all. Look at that. He leaned. Brown leaned too soon. Just missed the medal at the World Championships in Brown last year, and he got fourth in the world in rankings. So beating top talent here is Bershawn Jackson. And there is the official mark at 46 for Bershawn Jackson, Chris Brown, and Jamal Ashley, but a tremendous race. Still to come, the men's 60 meters, short on distance, but long on talent. Tyson Gay, Sean Crawford, and Terrence Trammell. But up next, it's the men, four by 400 relay, with an attempt at a world record. Hi, I'm Allison Felix, 2004 Olympic medalist. As U.S. track and field athletes, our journey to the Olympic Games begins with the opportunity to compete against the world's best. The Visa Championship Series brings together the best athletes right here in the United States to compete for valuable prize money, which helps us train for our ultimate goal, the Olympic Games. The first year of the Visa Championship Series was filled with heroic efforts and surprise finishes. We hope you enjoy this year's Visa Championship Series. And as part of that Visa Championship Series, we welcome you back to the Tyson Invitational. We're picking up the men's 4 by 400 meter relay, Texas A&M, Baylor, Texas Tech, and Florida are the four teams involved. There. And Gary, head coach Todd Harbor's Baylor Bears are sailing along in the lead right now. And Florida at the moment is in second place. And Baylor has had a terrific tradition, including the great Michael Johnson, Daryl Williamson, and, and just to name somebody else, Jeremy Warner, who has contributed to their great relay legs. But look at this move being put on by Florida. But it's still Baylor in the lead as Quentin Summers, just a freshman, maintains the lead for Baylor over Coach Mike Holloway's University of Florida Gators. This is the anchor leg. The first three legs have been averaging right around 46.5 or so per 400 meters for the men. Back in third place, Texas A&M. In fourth, Texas Tech. Coach Pat Henry with the team in third place trying to build back up the Texas A&M sprint program as he had so successfully done at LSU. Look at the move being made by Florida. Florida challenging for the lead, but the young freshman Quentin Summers is holding off Florida and Texas A&M making a late charge. Brian Kelly, the senior, but it's going to be Baylor Bears winning in three minutes, six seconds plus, fastest time run by a collegiate team in the country this year. So it is Baylor, Florida, and Texas A&M. Let's go down to the infield and Leslie. I'm here with Bob Corsietin, who is the Senior Vice President and Chief Marketing Officer for Tyson's Food. And Bob, Tyson has been sponsoring this event for seven consecutive years. That's pretty special, but there's something special going on this year. What are you most looking forward to? I am really looking forward to some folks broke, breaking the world record tonight. Uh, you know, we've been doing this seven years, and it's been a great event for us, and it's really helped the University of Arkansas and, and helped this town bring, you know, track and field, the world-class event here. Uh, Tonight we're going to award $25,000 to every world record set, so nice. it's exciting. All right, good time to be powered by Tyson. Absolutely. Thanks, Bob. Stay powered up. Okay. Here at the Tyson Invitational, we've had a chance to watch the men and women on the track. Let's turn to the infield now, Larry, and take a look at the pole vault event. Well, Gary, the night belonged to the oldest world-class pole vaulter currently competing, American Jeff Hartwig, now 38 years young. And look at him soar over that bar, clearing 18 feet, four and a half inches smoothly. Hartwig last week went to New York and won the Milrose Games over the number one ranked pole vaulter in the world last year, American Brad Walker. Now 24 years of age, just a 16-foot pole vaulter in high school, went to the University of Washington and vaulted so well he won up a two-time NCAA indoor champion in the pole vault. And Walker matched at this point Hartwig. It was his second attempt, and he was in second place, clearing 18 feet, four and a half inches. The bar was moved up to 18, eight and a quarter. At this point, Hartwig had had no misses, and this is his first attempt. And he flies over the bar. The American indoor and outdoor record holder is Jeff Hartwig. And he wins the competition at 18-8 and a quarter over the number one ranked pole vaulter in the world last year, American Brad Walker. 
And Russ Buller finishing the third. Three from the USA there. We talk about world records that everyone's going after. Well, another action this weekend. Another attempt at a world record in the men's four by 400. This race, Gary, took place this bonus coverage the day after the Tyson Invitational at the Tyson facility. The leadoff in blue in lane five on the track, Karan Clement, the world indoor record holder for 400 meters. He did it on this track. Top college teams are up against him. That's Kelly Willie from LSU on the outside challenging, trying to hold on and maybe even get the lead away from Clement as they break for the pole. Smart move by Clement. He's got the lead, he's clear of the field, and he hands off to Wallace Spearman formerly at the University of Arkansas, 46.1 seconds. The time they're going for, three minutes, 2.83 one hundredths of a second, set by a U.S. national team in 1999 at the World Indoor Championship. Spearman lengthens the lead and hands it off to Olympic medalist at 400 meters in Athens, Daryl Williamson, who's the training mate of Jeremy Warner, who will have the anchor. It's all Team USA at this point. And Williamson runs a magnificent leg, 45.2 seconds, and hands it off to the Olympic champion himself and the world indoor champion last year, Jeremy Warner, the number one ranked 400-meter runner in the world, powering down the stretch, flying away from everyone, and breaking the world record, the new world record, three minutes, one, 0.96 seconds. These guys average 45.5 seconds a man. And Bob Forstadden from Tyson presents him with a check for $25,000 for a new world record. Still to come, Lisa Barber takes on an international field in the women's 60 meter. An attempt at a world record in the men's 300 meter. Spearman, Clement, and Merritt will be going after it. But up next, Jen Toomey and Tiffany McWilliams, the women's smile. And we welcome you back to the Tyson Invitational. The women's smile is coming up. And for that, energy. Tyson Foods knows all about that. They are on uh, hand here with a lot of protein food. That's what it's all about. And for the athletes, it is what it's all about. Power, strength, protein. That's what fuels the folks who are inside here. The women's mile. You see the 2006 best. Haley Tewitt, who is not here at 429.23 in New York, set that mark. And we will have 13 racers who will be on the track in this one. Jen Toomey out front and center. Gary, this will look like the start of a cross country race on a six lane wide track with 13 athletes. Uh, but very fine talent on the track. And there's Jen Toomey in your picture. She had a personal best of right around four minutes and 30 seconds for the mile a couple of weeks ago in Boston. She's been getting some altitude training in at Flagstaff, Arizona. And a woman who they feel will take the pace out, who loves to run. Marlena Dietrich said, I want to be alone. <laughs> Tiffany McWilliams likes to train the same way alone, and she likes to take the lead. She'll break the breeze indoors are out just push the air aside she wants control of the race she's running better than ever before very deep international field led by melinda elmore from canada and mr watt Tedesse from ethiopia lindsey gallo is out so that has reduced this uh mass on the track by one and uh, no rabbit because as Larry said Tiffany McWilliams likes to get up to that fast start doesn't need one a race director saves a few bucks doesn't have to pay any professional athlete a little tip <laughs> always thinking that way aren't you and there she is she's out in front out in front it'll come be, get me it'll come get me it'll be eight laps Tiffany McWilliams will have Jen Toomey right behind her they are the two who are the favorites in this Melinda Elmore of Canada as well McWilliams and Kristen Worth, Worth who is in uh, blue, right now is sitting in the number two spot, a former Arkansas Razorback. She'll have a lot of fans here in this home. Toomey has run against McWilliams before, so she knows what she's going to face. This is what she said about it. To have someone like her in the race where she does quite quite frequently take the lead, take the lead early and and likes pushing the pace it's it it is it is good and you can kind of work your race plan into depending on what 
you know, knowing that she's in the race and that she's going to take it out, so it makes that a little bit easier. Well, I don't know if it's any easier, but at least you have some idea of what you're up against, and McWilliams is still on top, Elmore and then Worth. I wish I had looked uh, that young at 34. She looks 24, this Jen Toomey out there. The training agrees with her. And continuing the pace, pushing it out front, Tiffany McWilliams. Ran very well in Boston. Got a personal indoor best right around 430. There were three women all within a stride of each other. Tiffany McWilliams, former uh, star of Mississippi State, had the indoor-outdoor NCAA titles. Back in 2004, she took the lead right from the start. She is still out there at number one. Running a couple of steps. Running well, Gary. 66.4 seconds for the first 440 yards. Bouncing along, striding well. She missed the 04 season to Tiffany McWilliams coming from Little Red Bay, Alabama. And she was injured and had gone for six months, lost a, a lot of training. And, and she really had a fine fall of season in training. Ran really well right up through January and is now getting race sharp, she says, with a little more speed training. And she's ready to have her best ever year of track and field. McWilliams still on top. And uh, Elmore from Canada is holding on to that number two spot. Then Jen Toomey, who is fourth, and Kerry Tolliver is fourth rather to is third right now Harry Tollison one of America's best of 15 and 5,000 meter runners will this pack separate here soon McWilliams has set a pace that uh, so far really hasn't taken anybody out of the race that's a good point Gary she really hasn't although it's a very solid pace and here she comes striding around with three laps to go at the 250 mark, as she came across, McWilliams, still number one. Jen Toomey now has moved up to number two. The two favorites, Elmore of Canada, back to third. And the Ethiopian, Tedese, has gone into the number four spot. Gary, at this point in the race, coming up with two laps to go, they're approaching three quarters of a mile. It's interesting to kind of speculate here on who might have the sprint speed finish. Toomey is perhaps the fastest at 800 meters, who's on the shoulder of McWilliams right now. Tedese running very well. She's a 201, 800 meter runner as well. Elmore ran well and had a good kick in Boston. And Toomey takes over, fading to third. 3 323 through the three quarter mile pace. So you saw McWilliams for the first time uh, falling back a bit as Jen Toomey had her lined up on the outside shoulder, went ahead and grabbed the inside. And she continues to be on top. Elmore of Canada in red is still number two. And McWilliams number three. There is Jen Toomey. Coming up to the Bell Lap. The fastest mile in the world this year set by Great Britain. Kaylee Tullet, 429.23 seconds. Let's see if these ladies can get it as Elmore surges into the lead. Now that pack has indeed separated and uh, Elmore looks very strong. She has uh, run very well. Elmore of Canada and McWilliams number two. Elmore, who hung on in that two and three spot early on, has got uh, a good four stride lead here. Elmore of Canada, Tiffany McWilliams. The DC is third right now. And let's see as uh, she got it up. McWilliams overtakes her. And McWilliams will get there to DC second and Elmore third. That to me is a wow. What a credit to Tiffany McWilliams. I, uh, you know, I mean, I'm not a Betty man, but I really didn't think that when they passed her, she would be able to come back. That's one of her more satisfying moments she's had in the last year and a half of her track and field career. She left Mississippi State a year early to turn pro, as many top collegians are doing in track and field. Many stay, continue getting their education, but make a real sometimes six-figure salary here. Look at her sweep down the home stretch. And really take, that's amazing to me. Congratulations to Tiffany McWilliams on what she accomplished here tonight. Jen Toomey had gotten out in front of her midway through the race, but McWilliams looked as though she planned on it that way. Tiffany McWilliams. Tremendous at 430.60. Elmore, who led a large part of that race, ended up third. Tiffany McWilliams, great plan, executed well. Later, Alistair Craig, who prepared for the men's 3,000-meter race tonight by running the fastest mile in the world this year, will have a shot at it. But coming up next, the men's mile. Jason Lund, two-time U.S. indoor champion, leads the field.
just the few of the over 3 million children who have benefited from the Be a Champion program. Recently, some of our world-class athletes came to bring their presentation right here to Arkansas. Be a Champion, the name says it all. USA Track and Field and the American College of Sports Medicine joined forces last year to educate young people about the merits of living drug-free, being physically fit, and leading a healthy life. The program has touched over three million youth so far. This week, a few world-class athletes stopped by Central Junior High School in Springdale, Arkansas to share what meeting a champion means to them. Typical day, typical day. Wake up at about 12.30, go to class. Nah, I'm just playing, I'm just playing. <laughs> to me, fair play is not cheating on anything. Workouts, school, sleep. I love my sleep, don't cheat your sleep. Over the course of this day, some lifelong lessons are passed on. Lessons that have merit far beyond the field of play. Integrity goes not also in sports, it goes in everyday life. You know, in fair play also. Getting a job, you know, working, doing everything. That also goes, falls in sports and in work, everyday life. Leslie, thanks very much. Great to have you with us here at the Tyson Invitational, Randall Tyson Center, here in Fayetteville, Arkansas, in our Visa Championship Series, continuing now with the Men's Mile. And you take a look at one of the favorites. This is Jason Lund. And he is really, I think, the class of the field here uh, remains to be seen. But he is really enjoying track and field, he said, more than ever. He is out getting his MBA at the University of Colorado after a brilliant career at Stanford and a great track and field career there as well. Will not be easy. This is a uh, this is a fairly deep field. Uh, Ahmed, who is here in Fayetteville, will have some fans. He's a senior here at Arkansas. And James Hatch, who's beside him, was also an Arkansas grad, a 401 miler, better known for his 800 meter exploits, was Hatch. And there's the coach when you're here at Arkansas, John McDonald, who has built the great program here with the 41 national championships. And the main smile is underway. And off they bolt. Lund decides to slip to the back as everybody squeezes off into the first turn. And Mark Thompson, uh, a former Arkansas Razorback and a high school star of note, uh, is actually taking this pace out. And they hope to get right around two minutes, maybe a little faster, for the first 880 yards. Eight laps. It is a 200-meter track. Mark Thompson, the rabbit, expected to set a modest, a moderate pace here as they come through that first lap at uh, 29 seconds. For Jason uh, Lunn, this is the guy who really has gone through, as he put it, heartbreak because the 2004 Olympics, not there for him. That was tough. I definitely had to take a break. And that break was basically last year. And I went back to school, getting my MBA at CU. And, uh, after that break, I, I realized that I needed to, to do this some more. I, I realized I still have the talent to do well, to race fast, and I decided to come back. And, and my coach, my dad, I, I think it's pretty vi visible to everybody that, that this year, um, I'm not only happier just with myself, but I'm more comfortable with myself in the running area as well. Well, a tip of the hat to him after finishing fourth at the 2000 U.S. Olympic Trials, just missing the team, and just missing the 2004 team. Imagine the difficulty of sometimes two-a-day sessions for five years to make the Olympic team and missing. And I understand that year off. A tip of the hat to him also for being number one in his class in mechanical engineering at Stanford and number one in his class in the MBA program at the University of Colorado. Can you, you believe that? You imagine that. There's John McDonald. He will be uh, cheering on many of the runners here who have represented and still do represent Arkansas as they come to the line here. The Rabbit's going to drop out at 159.14. And uh, Tyler, Nephi Tyler, has uh, taken the lead here. Now let's we'll see after a moderate pace set for the Rabbit. Let's see whether or not anybody picks it up here. Lutt is in second place. Nephi Tyler ran 403 for the mile last month. In third place, the man that is being cheered on by McDonald here, and that's Saeed Ahmed, a senior at Arkansas, who he has brought along brilliantly. Ahmed 
from Dorchester, Massachusetts, had a very fine high school career, has come down here and improved all the way from the 416 or so level down to a 357 mile as I met the man at third. And that was Tyler Lunn and Ahmed, one, two, three, as they came across with the pace as expected, slow enough, if you will, to keep most of these runners in contention. Lunn looks very smooth in second place. He's run 356.77 seconds this year. And here comes Jason hammering away by the three quarters of a mile at just under three minutes, 259.76 seconds. Jason Lunn uh, taking the lead there. He is a two-time U.S. Indoor champion. And he is third in the visa standings. This is the third of the championship events sponsored by Visa. Lunn's dad, John, was a top collegiate runner also, and as you can see by his movement out here now, the apple did not fall far from the tree. Look at him just sail along, and he says, I'm happy, and boy, does he show it with the way he is sailing along this indoor season. An unbelievable lead. The battle's going to be for second. Ahmed uh, trying to hold on to second place. Lund way out on top here as he is coming around the last turn. He's going to have a great time. Lund is going to win this going away. Brown, Ahmed for second place, and he came back and got it. So a tremendous race put on there, Lunn unofficially at 355.87. Let me make one correction. That was actually David Freeman, formerly of Kentucky, that wound up in second. Getting under four minutes was Freeman. Brown got under it also. Look at the time for Lunn. A terrific mile time, just off the fastest in the world run this year. 355.87 seconds. Terrific time for Jason Lunn, a very fast last 400 meters. Boy, he might do some damage at the World Championships, assuming he goes. But a great finish for Freeman as he was able to edge out Russell Brown. There are one, two, and three. Still to come, the men's 60 meter. Terrence Trammell, Sean Crawford, and Tyson Gay. And the men's 3,000 meter with Alistair Craig. But coming up next, it's the women's four by 400 relay when we return. We welcome you back to our Tyson Invitational. You have seen John McDonald. He is the track and field coach here for the Razorbacks, and what a history. John McDonald immigrated to the U.S. in 1964. After a stellar college career at Southwest Louisiana, he turned to coaching, and in 1978 was offered the head job at Arkansas. Success is never a destination. It's a journey. Since 1984, all of the universities in Division I have won collectively 24 cross-country indoor and outdoor national titles. John McDonald's Arkansas Razorbacks have themselves won 41 titles in that time. Only four NCAA institutions have won more than 41 men's national titles in all sports. Through the years, his humility, humor, and sense of honor have kept jealousy at a minimum and respect in the track and field world at the highest level. Serious respect and recognition followed his success. Destiny in America is not a matter of chance. It's a matter of choice. John McDonald has proved that. Well, if success is how you measure how well a coach or anybody else has done, we certainly can say for John McDonald, it has been done well. There seems to be something down there with Leslie right now. What do you have? All right, guys. Well, many an accolade have been uh, bestowed on Coach McDonald, but this has got to beat all. 1,000 bobblehead dolls were produced and passed out today. And I have to say, on a scale of 1 to 10, it's got to get a good 8 for resemblance. I can safely say that now my collection is complete. Gary? <laughs> 
Time for the women's college four by 400 relay. You're taking a look at the collegiate record, 327.66, set by Texas right here in 2003. One of the things we've not had a chance to talk about, Larry, to the moment is this track. How about where this track sets for the athletes here? What kind of a track is it? You know, Boston, which we saw on our competitions that we had a couple of weeks ago from the Reebok Boston Indoor Games, the banking is about a foot and a half to two feet less high on the turns in Boston. Here, the athletes can fly into the turns better, and they get faster times in the sprints as a result. Boston very, very fast also for distance races where the banking is not quite as important. So there you have lane one open, Arkansas and uh, Baylor, LSU, Miami, and Texas. And the four by four, that's how they match up. And uh, it'll be Katrina Taylor for Baylor, Zenithia Rooks, LSU, Gino Etne for Miami, There's been one change for LSU. Leading off will be Brooklyn Mars in lane four. Seven. Brooklyn Mars will uh, in lane four. So it's Arkansas on the inside. Baylor running next to them in green. LSU in the purple. Miami on the uh, next to them. They will now be able to break for the pole. Texas on the outside in the white top. Now they get to move to the inside. LSU on top as they came around that first turn. They run two laps. So they're ready for the handoff as they come back. LSU, Miami, one and two. Pretty good pace here to start this four by 400. You know what, Tien from Miami challenging for the lead, but holding her off is Brooklyn Mars from LSU. And they pass the baton. Very fine time, about 53.3 seconds for both leadoff women as Miami coach by Amy Deem takes the lead. Boy, they had a, a tremendous first two laps run there. And all of the handoffs were clean. And they're going to keep this pace up as they come around here in the women's four by 400 relay. And Gary, out of the lead is Dominique Darden, who had a terrific high school career. Her dad, Tony Darden, in the 70s, was one of the best 400-meter runners in the world. And obviously, his daughter has taken some of those quality genes and is performing at his specialty and made it hers as well. Miami extends the lead here. LSU of Texas right now battling for second, then Arkansas, and then Baylor. Miami with a good lead for the handoff here, and it is clean. And again, all the handoffs clean. Unofficially about 52-5 for Dominic Darden in the lead as she's got about a three-step lead. She gave her the baton off as she handed off to her teammate, Krista Simpkins, who's just a freshman out of the lead. LSU and Texas battling for that number two spot as they come around for the first of their two laps. Still Miami out on top. This is, this is tremendous pace. Oh, it is. This is Cynthia Rooks from LSU in second place. And for Coach Bev Kearney's Texas team, Melanie Walker is running the third leg, an All-American in the 400-meter intermediate hurdles, and they are slowly chopping down the lead of Krista Simpkins, the freshman from, Emma, from Miami. Four by 400, and now it's Miami, LSU, and Texas as they are well ahead. Well ahead, and here are the, the final leg. Now LSU, two here. LSU, Miami, Texas, LSU, Deanna Lawrence, a sophomore, trying to leg this one out. It is a three-team race as we head to the bell lap. 200 meters to go. Latasha Kerr in the white top of Texas is anchoring for them. Miami slipping back as Ina LaFroy. Miami running with, with uh, a junior, two juniors, and two freshmen is Miami. They come towards the final turn, LSU with a substantial lead, then Texas, and then Miami. LSU is going to come out on top here in the women's 400 
That's the way they finish. Gary, by far the fastest time run by a collegiate women's team at 4x4 four four in the country by almost three and a half, almost four seconds, really. Just a huge improvement. And by the time the NCAA championships come up in mid-March, which you will see here at ESPN, these women will be even faster. They run tremendous relay teams at the 4x4, four four, men and women. Great, great pace. LSU, wow. Texas, and uh, Miami, then Baylor and uh, Arkansas is how they finished in the 4x400. Four Earlier today, the men's semifinals of the 60-yard dash, and 60-meter dash, excuse me, and flying down the straightaway to win by a narrow margin at the end was Aaron Armstrong. I, let me correct that. It was Jason Smoots as he just out cleaned at the tape. Trey Griffiths from Texas. In the second heat, getting off. Stumbling badly was Sean Crawford, but it was Terrence Trammell pulling away at the end, and he ran the fastest time coming into the finals of 6.60 seconds. Trammell, one of the favorites, and certainly nothing in uh, that semi heat that would diminish the fact that he is going to be one of the favorites when we get to the finals. Our Visa Championship Series will continue from Arkansas. We'll be right back. We welcome you back the Tyson Invitational here at the Randall Tyson Center. World record chances are still coming up, Larry. They certainly are. Let's take a look at some of the E-Trade. Many of you have been kind enough to send in a lot of questions over time, and let's just answer a few of them as we can. We're glad that you do enjoy the meets. We're trying to show you more cross country and more other events and more details. We're giving you more on our telecast than I've ever seen. They're more complex look back races, other things and features we're throwing in. We hope you enjoy them. The performance is one of the things you can say about indoor jumping events is it's early in the season. The athletes are really just getting started. They, they really tend to jump better outdoors. Why? You've got another five or six, or in some cases, three months of additional training. That does make a difference. You do so good at that, Larry. You're such a tech wizard. Do send additional emails to your folks, and USA Track and Field will get you if we read it on the air. That sweatshirt, I was going to say a t-shirt. Close Never enough. underestimate, Gary, the power of a sweatshirt or a t-shirt. USA Cross Country Championships coming up from the Bronx. And the AT&T USA Indoor Championships. You gotta go to the Bronx, then you gotta go to Boston. Cause that's the way it is in this world. Said it the right way, Boston. Boston, you gotta go to Boston coming up February 19 at midnight and February 26, AT&T USA Indoor Live, 3.30 on ESPN. We are ready now for the men's 60 meters. Don't blink. If you do, you'll probably miss it. Human drag racing. Gotta love it. I never had the speed to be a sprinter. I would have been instead of a miler. There is the American and the world record at 639. Maurice Green setting that in 98 and 2001. These runners will certainly be challenged by just the strength and depth of this. You saw earlier, Terrence Trammell, who is one of the favorites, coming away with a win in the uh, qualifying semis. He is the fastest hurdler sprinter ever in history. The man has got world and Olympic medals in the hurdles, and there's Sean Crawford, the Olympic champion at 200 meters, stumbled out of the blocks, barely made it into this final. He was the last of the eight qualifiers. He is not racing a zebra, so things may be better for him. <laughs> <laughs> he is one of the characters of track and field. And Tyson Gay also comes in as one of the favorites, and he is from Fayetteville. And he runs very, very well. This is short in some ways, a little bit for, for Crawford, a little bit for Gay. They're better as the races go along. Tyson Gay won the semifinal, finished first in his heat. So Norman Scales Burns, Tramel Gay, Jason Smoots, who had an outstanding semi, Trey Griffin, and Sean Crawford in that number eight lane. You see the young men who are behind on the blocks. That track is so slippery there that they needed people to hold the blocks steady with the push, obviously, that these athletes give to them. 
good idea by meet director Art Huff, who's put together a very fine field here, just like in Milrose last week. David Katz and director Emeritus Howard Schmertz did. Guns up. Watch the center of the track. Center. And great jump. You know, Griffin in the middle. And yeah, what a tremendous run. Close, tremendous. That might have been Terry Trammell. Yeah, I think it's very hard to tell at that angle. It is Trammell. They know, and he's applauding. Trammell gets the victory, Gary. What a start. I mean, he had the tremendous start and then legged it out. Take a look here. Look at him blast out of the blocks, and it is Trammell in the middle of the track. The longer the race goes towards 100 meters, the better he gets. And Trammell wins in 6.56 seconds officially. Second place went to Tyson Gay in the exact same time, 6.56 seconds. That's the second fastest time in the world. Jason Gardner of Great Britain has the fastest at 6.55 seconds. As we said, don't blink. So 6.56 gets it done, and Terrence Trammell, a tremendous finish. Crawford, who we were looking at, ended up finishing fourth. Trammell, Tyson Gay, Jason Smoots, and not much of a separation in the men's 60 meter. Terrence Trammell takes the victory. <laughs> Women's high jump, earlier action here tonight. By the time the bar was raised to six feet two and three quarters of an inch, Gwen Wetland and Shate Howard were out of the competition, and only Amy Acuff was left to attempt six feet four and three quarters of an inch. And she sailed over the bar for her best performance indoors this year. And the young lady who has age group records in the United States from 14 to 17 years of age continues to high jump well. Still to come, the Adidas Women's 60 meter. Lisa Barber, the Visa Champions Series leader at the moment. And the men's 300 meter, perhaps a world record. Clement, Merritt, and Spearman will be going after it. But coming up next, Alistair Craig and the men's 3,000 meter when we return to Arkansas. The Tyson Invitational continues here at the Randall Tyson Center in Fayetteville. Let's get down. Uh, Leslie's got another special guest. Leslie. Terrence, what a race. It looked like it was running the first three steps. Take us through the progression. Yeah, I just wanted to get a good start, react well to the gun, and uh, just go through my phases the right way and take it all the way through the tape. And what does this do for you leading into nationals in two weeks? Uh, it gives me a boost because uh, I kind of struggled a little bit for the past week and a half. And uh, I got a chance to come out with some great competition and perform well, so I'm grateful. No sign of struggle tonight. Congratulations. Thank you. Gary. All right, Leslie, thank you very much. And he certainly uh, did not struggle. We're in a tremendous race. Now it's the men's 3,000 meters, the American record at 739.23 set in Boston in 2002, the Tyson Invitational, 738.30. And we will see Chibobo in this race, and he holds that mark. And they have 11 in this field. And there we see a close-up of Alice, uh, Alistair Craig, originally from South Af Africa. His grandparents matriculated and were actually Irish by birth, so he could take that citizenship. And here he is beating a year ago, Kennedissa Bekele, named the outstanding male track and field athlete in the world, as Bekele miscounted the laps, had nothing left in the last lap, and Craig understood what was happening and nailed him in the last lap to get the victory. And here is last year's Tyson Invitational, and it is Craig winning in front of the home audience down the home stretch, running superb times. Seven NCAA titles for that man in his career at Arkansas. A lot of Arkansas fans here and a lot of Arkansas names out there. There you see the competitors who will go at it here. And uh, this one, if they're going to really not a big favorite, Craig will be one of them. Chaboy will be one. Daniel Lincoln will be another. There is a coach who's going to keep a very sharp eye on this. John McDonald with a lot of Gentlemen. people that he trained here for the Razorbacks out there on this track and he hollers he's out there as though he's coaching 
He loves it. He says, I'm 67 years of age. I love nothing better to do what I'm doing. As long as I have the passion, I want to continue. And, and Craig, who's in second place right now, chasing the rabbit, said of him, when I came here for school, the man in second place said this, I'll start Craig. He said, I was dispirited. I had lost my confidence. I had quit running. And he said he restored the confidence, built me up, and when he told me I was ready, he said it was totally reassuring, and it made the difference in my career. Boy, has that paid off for him. Mark Fountain, who is from Australia, is the rabbit. And uh, Fountain uh, setting the pace here. Alistair Craig and Goucher were behind him, two and three for the moment in this race. 15 laps. It's 240 yards shy of a two-mile race, this men's 3,000-meter race. Now, here's the great stat. I love this stuff. I mean, you, you get close to four minutes for the mile. It's sensational stuff. The goal here is to run the first mile at about 4.03, and then they go by in just under 59 seconds for the first 400 meters of this race, and they're going to run almost two full miles. That is astounding stuff. With Fountain being the rabbit, it is behind him, Craig, Jaboy Wu, Lincoln, and Goche, who are in that order out there right now. Fountain from Australia trains right here on this track. It seems half the world out here trains yeah, here. It exactly. runs very, very well. Well, as we mentioned before, a lot of athletes try and qualify college level on this track because it is noted for its speed. Dan Lincoln, talk about the long and the short of it. Look at Lincoln, well over six feet tall, and Shaboywo in front of him is 5'3". <laughs> but they can still fly, both of them. And Lincoln, who was a brilliant student here, and the man right there in the uh, fourth place with the blue shorts with the number four. And he wound up uh, in med school down at uh, in Little Rock and comes up here occasionally for workouts. This is the men's 3,000 meters. We will come back to complete it in just a minute. Let's take a look at Daigle in Boston last year. She surprised everybody with this victory. Her time, 7.09 seconds, was her personal best and gave her an extra $25,000. Lauren Williams at the World Championships got out well as she often does and just held on for the victory over Veronica Campbell. Lisa Barber in Boston stormed away to the victory over Lauren Williams and set the standard. And she is still in the lead to collect an extra 25. And last week, Veronica Campbell at the Milrose Games in New York came from behind, as she often does, and just at the last step, step, got the measure of Lisa Barber. And that sets the stage for this great, great field. There is more Olympic and World Championship gold, silver, and bronze on this race than I perhaps have ever seen at a women's indoor competition at 60 meters. And it sets the showdown between uh, Campbell and Barber yet one more time. And as you can see, they will be side by side, lanes four and five. Campbell looked very good in winning her semifinal. Barber watched that, and then Barber came back and won in the second semifinal. So these two got to watch one another race. Barber now did not fault start here, and they did not. That is Veronica Campbell with the lead. Oh, big lead. Oh, she just cruised. She just cruised. She looked fabulous in her heat. This is her home track that she trains on, Gary. And she is ranked number one in the world at 100 meters and 200 meters. I was going to say earlier, I think this will be the fastest time in the world this year. I don't mind like sticking my neck out. I should have said it before the race. But 7.04 seconds really crushes the, crushes the best time ever run this year by Tabakova of Russia. Look at her pull away. Great arm action. She is the smoothest of the sprinters out there right now. Watch her out in the middle of the track. She is in lane five, and she gets out to a terrific start. The longer the race goes, the better Veronica Campbell gets. The woman from Jamaica who turned pro this year. Look at the smooth, terrific form. And it is hers for the victory. Lisa Barber winds up in second. Lauren Williams takes third. That is a new Tyson mark that has been set. You saw her looking up. 7.04, why not beating Lisa Barber handily? And as Larry said, the, if that had gone any longer, the distance simply between herself and Barber would have been even larger. And she celebrates. Let's get down to Leslie. 
All right, guys, well, with all this talk about the powered by Tyson 300 meters, we haven't talked about technical aspects of the race. What does it take to run these turns? This entire race is run in lanes. Wallace, is it more difficult to go into the turns or come out of the turns? Let me know. This is your house. I say it's more difficult for most to come out of the turns because you have to go down the hill and almost uh, stumble coming down the hill. So. All right. So when you're going through the turns, are you telling yourself anything specifically okay. form-wise? Run. <laughs> just run. All right. Well, just run, baby. We're looking for a world record. <laughs> Listen. It's an exciting feel. You got the 400-meter world record holder, 200-meter American record holder, and myself. I can imagine this would be the best match race. It's going to be kind of a new experience. And as far as strategies, win. That's the whole goal. It's going to be a very good matchup, and I'm very excited. You have to push yourself in this kind of race because there's no one person in the race that is not going to give it the best. It's anybody's race. I believe the winner of this race will break the world record and we'll get the $25,000. You can't run for money, but hey, if you win and you take it home, I'm not gonna complain. As long as I set myself up the first 200, the last 100, you know, everything will take care of itself. That'll just be natural. I will be the fan favorite, I guarantee that. Everybody in the race may be 32-19, so hopefully I'll be that one. should be a dandy because, as we said, this is a race not often won, and $25,000 will go to one of these racers if they can best that world record. 32 seconds, $25,000. you got to love it. You're on. It's a deal, and there are only four who get a chance. It is, and there you're looking at Wallace Spearman, who I think will take the pace out. He has said that he wants to go by the first 200 meters on an indoor track in 20.6 seconds. That is phenomenal speed. My question is, will he hold up the last 100? And will the 400 meter runners, who have maybe a little more stamina than he does, run him down? He's on his home track. He's in lane four, which he trains on. Trains on. Karan, Karan Clement has the world indoor record at 400 meters set on this track at the world at the uh, NCAA championships last year and uh, we'll see what he can do here he will be a major factor in the last 100 meters Clement the outdoor visa champion by the way as well LaShawn Merritt Merritt had the second fastest 400 meters ever run at this time last year did it on this track also kind of an unknown at this distance we'll see how his speed is at 300 meters and the crowd has been looking forward to this one if there's going to be a world record set this may well be it Omar Brown from Jamaica, the Jamaican record holder. Robson De Silva's record, the Brazilians, has stood since 1989. Antonio McKay has the fastest time ever run by the United States. This event is run much more often in Europe than it is in the United States. So keep in mind, 32-19 is that world record that, if bested here, will win $25,000 to the winner. <laughs> so far very even I thought you'd see Spearman who says I'm a racer not a time trial guy it is now Spearman with a slight lead Spearman has a step in everybody Spearman's got the step keep in mind they stay in the lane so that's what makes it difficult to judge exactly who's in the lead but Spearman certainly while Spearman where this is going to be a tight finish looking for that world record of 32-19 He sets the new world record, and all three of the top three bested that mark. 
Congratulations. And Tyson, from what they told me, they said we'd be thrilled to give this money away. We really would. These guys work so hard, they deserve it. And there's a big smile on Wallace Spearman's face. He left Arkansas early, went to high school right here in Fayetteville. And his dad was on the 1984 team that was the first national title for John McDonald. And again, that talent of 200 meters, show. Here's the replay. Coming around the final bend, he said, I want the lead, then I want to hold on. And he did. And he held off the two 400 meter runners on his outside that have two of the three fastest 400 meters ever run indoors in history. Fabulous creme de la creme type of race. Look at their powering drive to the finish line. Spearman was funny yesterday. He said, I don't know about this race. I don't know how to run it. I've never run it. Not sure what I'm going to do. What you do is win it. Leslie. All right. Well, you came into your own house. You took the electricity of all these fans and got your world record. Can anything compare to this? No. First off, thank the Lord. Thank my mother, father, everyone here supporting me. Thank my coach and my teammates, everyone. All right, and doing it in front of Mr. Tyson, what does this mean to be on your track? Well, just to see these young men. He grew up here in this, this area, in this town, and to watch him succeed and go forward, and then come back home and get a world record. We're all proud of him. We're proud of all the athletes here. So. Right, congratulations. Go take your lap, man. Sometimes you hype a race. This was one of them. You hype a talent. Spearman was one of them. The hype on both ends is lived up to by the youngster here. He really did. You know, I saw him here over here earlier, and I'm saying to myself, boy, go home and put your legs up and just relax. He's saying hello to everybody, his friends. And, you know, when you're 21 years of age, you get all kinds of energy. With the Tyson Invitational completed now, let's take a look at the Visa Championship Series standings for the women. Lisa Barber maintains her top spot, as does Reese Hoffa. One more event to gain points, the AT&T U.S. Indoor Championship, coming up later this month. We talked about who was here.